Hi guys, this is Emma at The Blog Lady and today I'm going to be talking about the missing pieces from Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me. Before I get into this, I'm going to quote something by David Lynch. And I just wanted to quote that because I think that watching the missing pieces definitely changes your experience of Twin Peaks and Fire Walk With Me. The missing pieces provide not only expanded scenes but new scenes that weren't ever included. For me, it's like looking in a mirror and looking at yourself at one angle for a long, long time and then sort of going to the side and then seeing yourself from another angle and seeing everything behind yourself as well. So I think that these deleted scenes and these expanded scenes really show a different side to Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me and expand the universe, revealing more of the story revealing more of the intention behind the story as well. When I first watched The Missing Pieces, I was completely surprised because most of the time when you get like scenes like this that haven't been included in a movie, they're pretty bad. And that there's a reason why they weren't included. But when I watched these, and I don't think it's just because I'm a Twin Peaks fan or a David Lynch fan, but I thought that a lot of them were fantastic. A lot of them I thought I would have loved if they had been in the movie. Um, I, I accept the movie as it is, but I think some of the missing pieces are really great. And I also think because of the way the movie was received at the time, that some of these scenes, had they been included, might have allayed that criticism, particularly in regards to a lot of the stuff which features Twin Peaks characters that we know, Twin Peaks characters who we didn't see in the final cut. I think a lot of a lot of these scenes that weren't included would have tied it to the series a little bit more and made it feel more familiar. But on the other hand, I can understand why they weren't included and why their non-inclusion made Fire Walk With Me what it is. So <laughs> it's difficult to kind of look at both sides. I'm not going to go over every missing piece um, I'm just going to talk about some of them. So I'm going to start by talking about the stuff with Chet Desmond and Sam Stanley. Um, we have some more scenes with them. Kiefer Sutherland is an actor that I was really happy to find out was in Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me. And I think because he was a big name actor, I would have liked to see more of him. So I like the scene with Cooper and Sam Stanley. I like that Sam Stanley's character was kind of exposed as this Willy Wonka type guy. <laughs> that eccentricity of the agents involved in the Blue Rose cases was further explored there. And also because I think Cooper's interaction with Sam sort of gelled things together with the Twin Peaks world. Whereas without that interaction in the movie, Sam and Chet felt a little distant from everything that we knew regarding Twin Peaks and the FBI. The missing pieces with Sam and Chet expanding on their relationship, um, I don't think we needed to see. Um, I think that there is a good reason why they were cut. They just seemed like expansions of scenes that probably wasn't necessary. One thing, you know, if, if someone asked me what, what I dislike most about Firewalk With Me, the final cut, um, I would have to say the stuff with the sheriff in the Deer Meadow and um, I'm really glad <laughs> that they did not include the fight with Sheriff Cable and Chet Desmond in the final cut because of the fact that I found that character incredibly irritating. I found the entire Dia Meadow characters incredibly irritating. I didn't think that they were particularly funny, although I think that that's what Lynch was pro probably going for there. <laughs> and of course we have to see the difference between the Dia Meadow sheriff station and the Twin Peaks sheriff station. So so we have that complete opposite in behaviours with the uncooperative sheriff and the ignorant deputy and the silly vindictive secretary. Completely opposite to like Harry and his team and Lucy. That scene with Cheryl Cable where he is fighting Chet it just it, it goes on for a long time and I think it was justifiable that it was cut. So going from something I didn't like, which was the Dear Meadow stuff, to something I did like, 
Uh, David Bowie. <laughs> Basically, anything where David Bowie scenes could have been extended, I would have been absolutely ecstatic with that. Um, I thought Agent Jeffries is a fantastic, enigmatic character, and I can understand why the Buenos Aires scenes were cut. They do seem out of place um, in tone and in cinematography from <laughs> compared to where we go with placed alongside those scenes in the FBI offices but I still would have liked to see more David Bowie and I think that scene with Bowie in the office when he's with Lynch and he exclaims about the fact that it's 1989 that should have possibly been left there because I think that it expanded on the mythology of Twin Peaks, the story, the backstory, the mystery. It also made that scene a little more scary because what he was saying was was so crazy and I also think that David Bowie just he really nailed those scenes and I would have liked to see more of him appearing back in Buenos Aires on the staircase however I would have just liked to see that bit um, with the Bowie on the stair <laughs> with the Bowie <laughs> the Bowie on the staircase and not his interaction with the guy who's Mr. Jeffries because that's a little too much, I think. Even though I do find that moment very, very funny. Possibly funnier than some of the Diametto stuff. Possibly funnier than, than a lot of the jokes that are supposed to be within Firewalk With Me. I do think that it undermines the seriousness of the Agent Jeffrey storyline. Whilst I would have liked to see more of Agent Jeffrey's appearing in Buenos Aires, the interaction with the man and the woman. I can understand why that was cut. <laughs> in regards to Agent Jeffries, we also see more of the convenience store scene where the characters from the Black Lodge are holding their meeting. Whilst it's interesting to see that scene in the missing pieces and, and to dissect it a little bit more, I think that the way it was edited in Firewalk With Me is appropriate for viewers because I think having a little bit of the mystery, seeing it behind a veil, is almost more intriguing than than just seeing everything exposed. Even though it doesn't make too much sense, I, I still think that the way it was done was perfect. So there's a missing piece with Teresa Banks as well, where she figures out that her client is Laura Palmer's father, and she decides to use this information. I like that scene because I think Pamela Gidley is a very good actress. I think what we found out about Teresa Banks from Sam and Chet's investigation was that she was an interesting character and that her story was worth exploring. So to see a little bit more of her and to know why she got into the trouble she did, that's quite interesting. To expose more of Leland's behaviour I think is very interesting as well. In regards to Leland, we have a scene with him and Laura. Well, Laura is hiding and she sees Leland. It's a terrifying scene that I feel could have added a lot to the movie because of the fact that I think Ray Wise is incredibly intense in this scene. He comes across as, as really inhabiting this spirit of Bob in that scene. Cheryl Lee's reaction to that as well, she looks terrified, genuinely terrified. It's just, it's such a simple scene, but there is so much behind their looks, their expressions. It's very dark, fits in very well with what we already have in Firewalk With Me, so I don't think it would have felt out of place in any way. Another scene that involves Bob is when Laura is being overtaken by him and she's standing under the fan in her home. I think in the final cut we did see enough of Laura being ravaged by Bob. This scene was a little like when she went to see Harold and she said fire walk with me and her face changed. So I think it was a little bit like that and maybe that's why they took this scene out. Cheryl Lee's acting in this scene is, is very good and it's reminiscent of the change of expressions that Leland has when he is changing from Leland to Bob in the series and it's just very good acting. I think it also exposes the spectrum of terror that 
Laura was being exposed to, you know, we see her, she's weak and she's exhausted and then we see Bob manifesting and his influence overtaking her and she becomes demonic and deranged. Twin Peaks Firewalk With Me does feel different to the series because of the fact that there aren't as many characters from the Twin Peaks series in the movie. But the missing pieces um, showcase a lot of these characters. I really wish some of the scenes had been in there, but if they had, they wouldn't possibly have um, made sense. They wouldn't possibly have fitted into the Laura Palmer story. I'm really glad that they exist in the missing pieces and the missing pieces in this sense stand, seems to stand alone almost as a, as a prequel of its own uh, for the characters of Twin Peaks. So for instance, like one scene that really gets me is the missing piece with Norma and Ed when they are sitting in the car listening to the radio and <laughs> I'm just gonna cry now. Um, <laughs> It's just when they are listening to the radio, they seem so... I'm sorry. <laughs> Stupid. Okay, I must be coming over as completely nuts, but the Norma and Ed relationship, I think, is completely summed up by this moment in the car. And when they are listening to this distant radio, I just find it really, really sad and also touching that they love each other so much. And that moment is is so perfect that they're together in that in that moment, and they might never ever have anything else, but that moment is just so beautiful. I'm really glad that scene is in the missing pieces. There are some scenes with Bobby and Laura and Bobby with his family as well, which I think actually expand on the Bobby character more than they do anything else. We see Bobby going home and hearing his father reading from the book of revelations and telling him to put out his cigarette and Bobby his response to that tells you a lot about who he is and what he's feeling about his parents and his home life we see a lot of the stuff with the drugs when he discovers that the drugs are baby laxative he loses it and then he and Laura discuss this later on and again I think that the scene with Laura exposes the fact that Bobby was quite a vulnerable person and exposes the fact that Laura was a little bit of a manipulator with him, a bit of a bully. She knew just what to say to him. We already knew that about Laura, but I think that seeing more of it with Bobby was perhaps more interesting, but again, because it focused more on Bobby, I think that's why possibly it was left out. Stuff that didn't need to be in there, I think, was stuff with Pete and Josie. I did think that we saw a side to Josie that perhaps we hadn't seen before. She seemed a little bit more demure and as though she was still learning how to coexist in her new world with Pete and with Catherine. There is also a scene with Lucy, Andy and Sheriff Truman which feels quite Lynchian in style, but which doesn't really need to be there as well. It didn't really need to have been in the movie. So Fire and Walk With Me was a dark movie, obviously, and the humor in it was dark as well. We don't see many light moments, but in the series Twin Peaks, it is implied that Laura Palmer had a dark side and a light side, and that she would show this light side to the world. The missing pieces reveal more of her relationship with her parents. And there is one scene which stands out. The Palmas are learning Norwegian. Everything seems fine. Everything seems so lighthearted and sweet, as though that family unit could never be touched, could never be harmed. The Leland Palmer we see in that scene where he comes in and yells, I'm hungry! That is the Leland Palmer that everybody loved and I think it's nice to see Laura have a moment where she can be free. Just a moment where that family, where that whole family seems to be free of the influence just for a, a short time, you know? There's a feature right on the, on the Blu-ray that Lynch sits down with Ray Wise, Grace Zabriskie and Cheryl Lee and he 
asks them to go into character and I think Ray Wise especially when he is channeling Leland that moment reminds me a lot of the scene with the Palmers when they are lear learning Norwegian um, because that's sort of the pure Leland and I think if you watch Lynch's reaction to Ray Wise in that moment that he is actually taken away to another world there are some interesting missing pieces featuring Annie which expand upon the finale of Twin Peaks. So we see Annie being taken to the hospital. She is comatose, she's bleeding. A nurse comes in and sees the ring and looks at the ring, takes it, admires herself wearing the ring. Now for that, I would say that a scene like that I think allows fans to conjure up their own theories about what the ring means, what will happen to who takes it, where is it going next, what will happen to Annie. I think that that's good to have a scene like that in included in the missing pieces so we can try and figure out what might have happened, what where we might be going actually in season three. I think that had there been more Twin Peaks at the time that that ring would have been more important, would have still been important. And that seems to be the case because the, the ring is referenced in Mark Frost's The Secret History of Twin Peaks. I mean, when the, the nurse takes the ring, that, I wouldn't say that was a particularly appealing ring for a woman. It's a very odd looking thing. So I can only assume that we are supposed to assume that the ring has some kind of mag magnetic quality that she would want to take it. And a missing piece with Cooper in the Red Room um, is another cliffhanger of him wondering what happened to Annie, wondering what happened to her because she possibly has the ring. Then we also see an extended version of Cooper in the bathroom, which I don't think added anything. So there's a very odd scene with Cooper in the missing pieces where he is supposedly talking to Diane and she's in another room in the FBI headquarters and he comes across as way too cocky and confident, um, especially around women. And it has always made me think from seeing that scene that Diane is an old woman because I don't think that he would behave that way with a young, or a younger woman or someone his own age. I just think it seemed very inappropriate the way he was talking, unless that, unless Diane was sort of an aged woman who, who liked to be spoken to like that. But I just thought Cooper is over the top. Possibly Kyle MacLachlan is over the top. It's a, it's a strange, silly scene, I think, and I can see why it was left out. So ultimately, I really like the fact that there are a lot of missing pieces that show more of the lives of the Twin Peaks characters that we know and love from the series. But I think that had they included more scenes of these characters in the movie, that it would have been a more complex, complicated, perhaps not even understandable movie. As it is, I think the movie would possibly play well to people who don't know Twin Peaks, but with those other bits included, I think it would have been only understandable by the fans. If I had to pick which missing pieces that I would have put in and which parts of the movie I would have cut to make way for the missing pieces, I would have cut some of the Dear Meadow stuff and I would have put more Bowie in, possibly the scene with Cooper and Sam Stanley, the scene with Teresa Banks I would have put in. I know that some fan edits have appeared. There's someone actually did an entire cut of this, I think, bar a few scenes. And it's an interesting thing to see to done like that. You know, that kind of ultimate fan edit is almost impossible to do because some of the scenes are edited from a different way, but they are giving us the same scene, essentially. Anyway, that's it for today from, from me. Thank you for watching. Uh, you can leave a comment below if you have any thoughts on the missing pieces. You can also subscribe to the channel if you like Twin Peaks, David Lynch or any kind of cult TV. That's all. Bye!